Hi everyone, here's what's bothering me today. It is Black History Month in the United States and ostensibly Canada as well. And so I've gotten really tired about people not knowing enough about the absolute boss black Canadians we have had since the 1600s that have helped shape this land and contribute to it. And we just really should know more about them in our history and appreciate them more. So that's what we're going to be doing this entire month. And so we're going to start off today at the very beginning with the first black person known to have visited Canada. And he visited Canada along with famous French explorer Samuel de Champlain. The earliest known black person to have ever visited the shores of what would become known as Canada was Mathieu da Costa. Now, Mathieu da Costa is kind of a fascinating and elusive figure. He was actually a free man, but he was kind of bartered back and forth between various different European powers to serve as an interpreter. So he was from Africa and he served initially as an interpreter for the French and the Dutch. And um, they apparently like one of them kidnapped him and impressed him into their service. I think it was either the French who kidnapped him from the Dutch or the Dutch kidnapped him from the French. Unfortunately, not much is actually known about him. Only secondhand accounts about him in relation to contracts and a lawsuit. Now, um, how he became an interpreter for indigenous peoples in Canada is really unclear. No one's sure how that worked. We only know that happened because of a contract that was signed. He had signed in May 1608 in Amsterdam a three-year contract with a French merchant promising his services as an interpreter as they were going to be exploring the then, you know, coast of the New World. Um, the earliest... Uh, guesses for, you know, how he was an interpreter have to do with the fact that at this point in time, when Newfoundland had been discovered, um, the Basque fishermen from the north coast of Spain and southwestern coast of France, they had actually been creating and using uh, what you could call like fishing posts and um, like whaling harbors and trade posts on these sort of little little dots on the map all around Newfoundland. So, you know, they would go there and prepare their fish, salt their fish, uh, clean and cut up the whales, etc. That's what they would do. And so what they believe happened was, again, with the indigenous Beothuk and also Mi'kmaq and Inu and Montagne and various other native groups around that area, they suspect that what happened was there was kind of a pidgin language that evolved that allowed them to function, you know, and, and help establish trade between these various different peoples. And it's believed that Matthew da Costa, being familiar with some of these languages, probably would have been seen as being very useful for future expeditions elsewhere on the continent. Um, so yeah, his, his three-year contract basically said that he will serve as an interpreter on voyages to Canada, Acadia, and elsewhere. Um, so Canada is what they called, you know, modern day Quebec in that area. Acadia is to the French what we now know as the Maritimes. And then you have, of course, Newfoundland, which was Terre-Neuve. And elsewhere could have been who knows where. And unfortunately, that's really all we know about Matthew da Costa outside of, you know, lawsuits and terrible words issued against him. Uh, someone sued him because they claim he was in violation of a contract Another lawsuit uh, was suing against a different merchant for claiming that they kidnapped him and his, uh, you know, employ because they wanted him as an interpreter. And that's really where the story ends, which is very unfortunate because Matthew da Costa is confirmed as being the earliest known black person to visit the shores of Canada. And he did so not as a slave, but as a free man and serving a very useful purpose as an interpreter. He's a fascinating figure and I wish more people knew him and I wish we knew more about him. And the fact that we don't is definitely what's bothering me today.